Hey everyone, welcome back. So in the last video, we got our flow all squared away. We attached our get oldest contact record to the update case, and we built a formula so that no matter if we found a primary contact or the oldest contact, we were going to use whichever one we found with our formula to update the case record. And so now we need to debug that and just test it. In order to do that, we need to set up some example data. So I'm gonna navigate away from the flow builder and back into Salesforce. And I'm gonna look for an account, or better yet, create an account that has at least two contacts. And so uh, earlier in the course, we were working with the Appleseed Enterprises account. And you can see that um, this came about from our uh, lead conversion flow. And I'm just gonna repurpose it here. And what I want to do first is make sure that there's at least one contact, and there is. So I'll open that up in a new uh, tab. And then I'm gonna make a second contact. And the reason I'm doing that is because I want there to be at least two contacts on the account with different created dates so that we can make sure our flow is finding um, the oldest one. So I'll just press new here in the contact related list. And uh, first name, I'll just name him Roger, last name Penrose. And you can call it uh, anything you want, doesn't make a difference. And I will intentionally leave the account roles blank and press save. And so now uh, I'll open up Roger Penrose in a different tab. But now we have two contacts related to this single account, uh, neither of which should have, if you open them up and click on the details page, neither should have an account role filled in. And the created dates should be different. So we see that this guy um, was created at 7.57 in the morning on January 17th. And Roger, if we look at the details, also doesn't have an account role. But was uh, and was created in March on, you know, 11:31 at 11:31 in the morning. So that's perfect. We now have two contacts. Let's create a case for this account so that we can use it in the debugger. So I'm going to press new. I'll leave basically everything blank. I think I have to fill in the case origin. Let's put in web and press save. And that was case 10:31. Uh, so. Uh, with that all set up, I'm going to navigate back to the flow builder. And now I'm going to press debug. And we'll skip the start condition requirements because we're not actually going to create a case. Uh, but we will select that recently created 1031 case uh, as our debug or the triggering record for the debug run. And then I'll press run. And so you can see that um, our flow completed. So that's awesome. And you can kind of trace the path of our flow with the yellow lines. So you can see um, almost right away that we went and looked for a primary contact. And when we got to our decision element, it didn't go down the yes path. Uh, it didn't find a primary contact um, because there was no contact with the account role set to primary. And you can see that here in the get records for the primary contact in the debug details, failed to find records. So our decision executed, and then we went to find the oldest contact. And we see here that we um, set up our get records to find all the contact records that matched the account ID of the case and it sorted in created date ascending order and it successfully found the records. Uh, we actually can't see the ID for the record here but if we open our update records for the case and then we look at our formula you can see here that our update records was successful and that our formula actually um, kind of spit out the ID that it evaluated as. So our formula logic ran, it checked if the primary contact was blank. If it was, then it used the oldest contact. And so we would hope that this ID here corresponds with the oldest contact between Bob Apples and Roger Penrose. So let's double check and see if that's true. So we see that this contact ID ends in GS, lowercase y, T-I-A-W. And so I'm hoping that's Bob Apples because Bob Apples was created in January, early January or mid January. So we see that Bob was uh, created on the 17th and sure enough, the ID in his URL matches that uh, one that was in the debug details. So this ID is GS lowercase y T I A W and uh, Roger Penrose has a different ID. So that's a really good sign. That means our sort order in the flow is working properly. And then uh, if we navigate back to the debug details, 
we can see that our case was ready to be updated. And so if we hadn't run the debug details or the debug in rollback mode, the case actually would have been updated with that ID, which is perfect. That's exactly what we want. As a final item, I want to make sure that um, by adding this new oldest contact functionality, that our formula and uh, the, the previous functionality of finding the primary contact still works. So in order to do that, we're gonna run another debug and I'm just gonna press edit flow here so that we uh, leave the current debug. And then I'm gonna navigate to the newly created contact, Roger Penrose. So if you named it different, feel free to navigate to that contact now. And I'm gonna set the account role here to primary contact and press save. And the expectation is that now that this Appleseed Enterprises account has a primary contact, that our flow should use that primary contact to update the case. And so we're gonna check that the primary contact get records find to this contact, that our decision element correctly uh, moves forward, and that our formula correctly evaluates the ID and is able to stamp that on the case. So I'm gonna go back to the flow. I'm gonna press debug. I'm gonna skip the start condition requirements. From the cases, I'll select the 1031 case or whatever case you're using. I'm gonna press run. And you can see that the pathing of the flow changed. So following the yellow arrows, we found our primary contact. We went to our decision element. Um, evidently, the decision evaluated that we had found the primary contact. And then we move forward with updating the case. And if we look at the update case records, we'll see that our formula here for the contact ID has a different value. And that ID is uh, 9G9 lowercase o IAB. And if we click open Roger Penrose, sure enough, that's the ID. So our flow is working, you know, that's great. That's perfect. That's everything we needed it to do, where it finds the primary contact, if not, it will try to find the oldest contact, and no matter which one it finds, it will stamp that value, that value onto the case that it's creating. So I'm gonna press edit, and then I'm just gonna activate this. So it's fully active and ready to go. And what we'll do is we'll just go back here to Appleseed Enterprises. We'll make one final new case. And I'll set the case origin as phone. I'm purposely leaving the contact name blank and I'm just gonna give it the subject uh, test case subject and I'll press save. And we would expect our flow to actually trigger and take the Roger Penrose account because that's the one we set as the primary contact um, and stamp that here on the case. And sure enough, case 1032 was created and you can see in the related list down here that the contact name is Roger Penrose. And if we actually open up the case, you'll see on the right-hand side that the contact name is filled in. So that's it, our flow's working. So uh, congratulations on making it this far. In the next video, we will we'll summarize challenge number three.